Welcome the stars of the highly, highly anticipated Jersey Boys. John Lloyd Young, Eric Bergen are here. Welcome. Wow. You make and me want to run away and join the, the movie circus. That looks like so much <laughs> fun. The movie circus. Well, we'll get into that <laughs> later on, that. but it looks like so much fun doing that. So, John, you played Frankie Valley. Yes, and then you played uh, uh, Guardi. Is that how you pronounce his name? Gaudio. It's Gaudio. Gaudio with a G. Yeah, Gaudio. So Eric, you played Bob Gaudio, yeah. who was really he really discovered uh, Frankie Frankie Valli, and you wrote for him. Yeah. But actually, wasn't it what's his name that discovered him? The actor. What's his name? It was well, what's no, his no, name? the actor. <laughs> the Joe one, Pesci. Joe Pesci, who yeah. discovered Frankie. Joe Pesci Frankie. discovered Gaudio. Oh, Gaudio. And then okay. brought Gaudio to yeah. the rest of the other yeah. guys. Yeah. I don't right. know if Together. many people know that. No. Well, they yeah. will. Now yeah, they do. Now, because yeah. we spoiled the movie. Yeah. No, is that true? Well, you know who does know that is Joe Pesci. Joe oh, Pesci knows that. Yeah. No. Right. But he was just right. re yeah. reminded recently of that. Yes. Uh, how do you make the jump, though, from the stage to the big screen? How did that process work? Uh, well, I mean, the show was a big hit when it opened on Broadway years ago, and Hollywood was sort of all over it. In fact, yeah. I got cornered at a party, and I was still making my Broadway debut by a Hollywood producer who said, you have to make sure they give us the rights. Then uh, I think Frankie and Bob are producers on the show, on the, on the movie, and they wanted to do it right. So they waited a few years, let the show sort of become a hit over the English-speaking world, and it wasn't until 2010 that Graham King, our producer, mm -hmm. won the rights, and they attached Clint Eastwood by 2012, 2013. But it seemed, because of the, the flash success of this, it seems like it would have been fast-tracked, but it wasn't. It wasn't. I mean, there's also the, the other side of it, which, you know, Chicago and Dreamgirls took 30 years to get from the stage to the screen. Oh, wow. So that's you, true. There, there's two things. You don't want to, uh, you, you know, when it's still fresh in people's minds, you, you don't want to do it, but you also want to get it when it is fresh in their minds. So. Right. And, and Bob mm -hmm. and Frankie really want to do it right, and I think that they held out for the... For the right director. Yeah. Right. What was this newcomer, Mr. Eastwood? Yeah. Yes, Mr. Eastwood. Yeah. yeah. What was that like? Yeah. He, yeah. he was. Uh, it was sort of a, a master class in in how to work. I mean, he really was an incredible boss and and let us play around and he gave us uh, space to to create and wants to know our first instinct. And he's your friend too, which is such a strange and weird and great privilege to for all four of us guys in the playing four seasons it was our first feature debut. Now that and, yeah. picture is, was a frightening day because he I'm can't from drive. New York City, so I didn't learn to drive <laughs> until I moved to Las Vegas to do Jersey Boys. And at this point, I practically drive a car that you know essentially drives itself. These modern day yeah. cars. Well, this car it wouldn't start up, and you have never been more frightened in your life than you see Clint Eastwood running, and I mean running down a street saying, yeah. "Why isn't it working?" Right. I mean, it was. <laughs> what, what, no. Eric kept stalling out. I did. Stalling, stalling did he out. ever look at you and go, "Feel lucky, pug"? Uh, you, uh, pretty kid. much. When, when my parents see the movie. Anytime that I'm in the driver's seat and the car moves, they applaud. <laughs> <laughs> well, we want to applaud. Let's take a look at um, uh, this is the, the video. This is the, the contract yeah. part um, of what's going down. Let's take a look at the movie. We make a partnership. I give you half of everything I write, and you give me half of everything you record outside the group. Well, why would I ever record outside the group? I don't know. Things happen. Yeah, what about Tommy and Nick? I mean, Nikki's really one about me singing, and Tommy, I mean, we wouldn't be here if it weren't for him. It won't go into their share. I'd never do that. Well, we gotta tell them. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Hey, if things work out, I think we can talk about a saxophone. If things work out, we can talk about a whole horn section. Okay, I'm in. All right. I'll somebody drop a contract. What, you mean like signing a piece of paper from a lawyer? <laughs> Yeah. Hey, you want to do this thing? Yeah, but we gotta so get something we do it. You want a contract? Yeah. A Jersey contract. Oh. Wow. Out of curiosity, how many takes did it take you to do that? Uh, I don't. That one was pretty easy for us because we did that that's, on stage. Yeah, that's yeah. Just like like a thousand like, times. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, so that, that was a, that was one of those famous Clint Eastwood, you know, one or two takes and you're done. Right. Do you how close when you did research for this? Did you work closely with with Bob and Frankie? Well, ironically, I actually got more information from Bob than I got from Frankie because I thought instinctively way back when we started Broadway that um, you would get a more true depiction of someone from their best friend than you'll get from the real person because the best friend will tell you the truth and the real person will spin it. Ah. <laughs> yeah. So Bob and I are actually friends longer than me and and than Frankie and I. 
Yeah, but we got sure. to work with them on the show. I mean, they really were helping us with the sound and, and getting that type of doo-wop vibe in the music. And I got to, we also got to watch these guys at work. I mean, Frankie's still on the road, and Bob no. worked on the sound of, of the show. So that we, handshake still stands yeah. all these years later. No piece of paper. Yeah. Really? Wow, yeah. That's it, it, and, and see the movie for how it caused problems with the rest of the <laughs> <laughs> yes. But But how disconcerting was it for you as, as an actor to audition first for the, for the Broadway play, which is a pretty big deal. I mean, you're, you're, you have an iconic group. Was the audition process uh, difficult for you? It was long. I long? mean, by the time I got, when I won the role, it was six auditions later. So, you know, clearly when you're putting up something that is that, a big a scale, you have to make sure that the person you're casting is, is, is has the, the skills that you need, right. and so I, I kind of had to jump through hoops, but you know, I got well, it. Well, when you're when you're Broadway is one thing because it's very precise. You have to hit your mark. You have to be in the lights. You have to do the music cues, and this was quite different. So yeah. did it throw you at all? To, yeah, it, it did in the beginning because we're so used to the scene being, you know, however long it is, and at the end of the scene, that's the end of the scene. Uh, but Clint likes to work in a, I don't use the word improv, but a sort of a free flowing space. And if, if you mm -hmm. want to say something new that comes out naturally, you're encouraged to do that. And Vincent Piazza, who plays uh, Tommy DeVito in this film uh, had never done the show and he came from he's on Boardwalk Empire right. and he comes from the TV and film world and is very comfortable with that so we would do scenes and he would be sort of free flowing and you know we'd get to the scene and we would just stop <laughs> just sort of <laughs> that's where we end and he would just keep going so it took us a minute to really right. get onto uh, that sort of wavelength of, of that kind of that really opened up these characters that we knew so well the three of us uh, who had had done the show before it just opened them up and made them freshly spontaneous which is great for Oh, right. well, look and see, yeah, we actually like each other. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, a selfie. Know, when that yeah. comes off on the screen, it's real. We actually really, we, we had a great time. We work really well together and we're friends. In and I'm life. doing the uh, John Lloyd Young vocal warm up in that photo. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> yeah. uh, I want to go back to something you'd said because you were talking about working with, you know, Frankie and talking to his best friend about him because I, you know, a lot of us know his story. He's, you know, there are times when he's very dark, sort of a stormy, emotional yeah. guy. It, Getting that information easier from a friend or going to him and trying to, to get the essence of who he is? It's funny because that sort of the emotional side of Frankie is, is easier to get when I'm around him. Mm -hmm. Because people kind of reveal themselves in how they choose to answer and sometimes how they choose not to. And so I, I'm, it's, it's Frankie in the beginning I think was a little weirded out by being around me because I was always sort of like, <laughs> looking for things to steal yeah. and, and now we're I mean all these years later we're so comfortable with each other that he was just a friend on on our, our set for about seven of the days of the shooting he was on there here and there and he put on his headset and sit in his, a director's chair and just watch us make a movie with Clint Eastwood sure. and he was just a friend what of were ours. things he wouldn't respond to that you would that would you would draw information from would you ever you know get ask him something and he yeah would look let's say that let's say you're talking to someone you ask them about I don't know some friend, but you don't know they're not friends anymore, and mm -hmm. they kind of just change the subject. Those little tiny subtle things you can pick up on his attitude toward something or an attitude toward a person, and that's really rich raw material for an actor for who's sure. looking for insights to steal.